Today, we're going to be comparing and talking about a few products that have become more popular to use in the automotive industry in the last couple years. One that's been around for a while, and one that's fairly new. What are they? Auto Dip and Plasti Dip. So what are these products, and why would you want to use them on your car? Both Auto Dip and Plasti Dip are basically rubberized spray paint. And what makes them special is the rubberized part. There's a couple big advantages and reasons why I use them that I see. One is the fact that if you're not very experienced and you mess up, it's no big deal. Because they're rubberized, you can just peel them off. Oh, dang it! And number two is that because they're rubberized, you can paint things like your grills or your wheels or black out your emblems or other things and the paint won't chip off. Because they're rubberized, if you paint them right and do enough coats, when rocks hit them, they basically just bounce off. And as far as my uses and the uses that I've seen between my friends and other people, the most common things that you're going to use Plasti Dip or Auto Dip for are going to be wheels and grills, although some people do paint their whole cars. Now the biggest differences that I see between the two, Auto Dip and Plasti Dip, is that Auto Dip can come with gloss already in the can, and Plasti Dip, if you want gloss since it's a matte finish, you do have to buy a separate can. Today we're going to be demonstrating those differences by spraying some grills for an E36 M3. These grills are what came stock on the car. As you can see, they kind of come out in two pieces, but the lip around the edge is chrome. So that's what we're going to be painting. I did buy aftermarket black ones, but if you didn't want to purchase something like this, using Plasti Dip or Auto Dip might be a good option for you. The most important part to any paint job is preparation. So first we're going to use some glass cleaner, and then to make sure we have off all the wax and the grease and whatnot, we'll clean with alcohol. Now that we know the surface is clean and free of all dirt, debris, wax, and whatever, we can get started. Now both products say to start out with light coats and then get heavier after that. We are going to need multiple coats, so keep that in mind. We'll start out with the Auto Dip first, and then we'll get on to the Plasti Dip. Now obviously you can do things like paint your grills and stuff while they're still in your car. Since these were already off, we're just going to do it this way. If it was on your car, you'd want to tape everything off around it. And then make sure to peel that tape off before the last coat gets dry. We'll go ahead and test this first on the side. Looks good. And here we go with the first coat, nice and light. Don't worry about your first coat being thick enough to have full coverage. First coat's done with the auto dip. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry for a second. And now for the Plasti Dip, same thing. First coat, nice and light. But both of these things I should mention, that if they come out kind of crazy and the spray isn't very good, it's typically because the rubberized spray has clogged the nozzle. So just clean that off and it should be good to go. Now our first coat of Plasti Dip is done. Here you can see what I mean when I say the first coat can be nice and light, you don't need full coverage. But now we're on to the second coat of the Auto Dip, and this one's going to be a bit heavier than the last. About 50% overlap is what they say. As you can see, this coat is much thicker and has a lot better coverage, which is what we want. Now as the Auto Dip one dries, let's move on to the second coat of the Plasti Dip. They both go on kind of wet, but once they start to dry a little bit, you can already tell that just after that second coat, the one on the left being the Auto Dip, is much glossier than the Plasti Dip on the right. We'll go ahead with another coat of the Auto Dip. And now for another of the Plasti Dip. I think right now would be a good time to mention that both of these products take a little bit of practice to get a good finish. Doing things like holding them too far away may get you too much orange peel, and doing things like holding it too close when you spray may make the paint drip. But again, that's why they're good, because if you mess up, you just peel them off and try again. I'm going to go ahead and apply a few more coats of each right now. While we're doing that, waiting for those to dry, let's talk about some uses for Plasti Dip or Auto Dip that you may want to try. And then we'll come back with a finished product. For instance, on this E92, BMW 335i, we have this kind of aluminum trim right here. If you wanted to black that out, some of your options may be wrapping, some just may be normal painting, 
or you could just tape off the windows and tape off the rest of the car and use the Plasti Dip and Auto Dip to black this out and you'll be rest assured that it's not going to chip off. And then, like I mentioned, you can paint some wheels with Auto Dip or Plasti Dip. The advantage to doing that over powder coating or painting is that a lot of tires, especially if you're stretching your tires, don't have a lip that covers this edge. And you might find that soon after painting them, you have a bunch of little chips around the edge. If you do Plasti Dip or Auto Dip and you paint it good enough with enough coats, that's not going to happen. Or if you want to get crazy with different colors because they do make all kinds of different colors, not just black, you can paint it and if you don't like it, no problem, just peel it off. Another common use for Auto Dip or Plasti Dip is to black out your emblem. So you can tape off a square around it, spray it all, and then once you peel off the dip that's on the paint, the little gap between the emblem and the paint makes it stay on the emblems. Now don't think that their use is limited to the exterior of the car alone. You can also use them to paint trim pieces and other things inside of the car as well. Now it's worth mentioning that the last few coats with both products suggest that you lay it on nice and thick so you have a clean, wet coat. This will help the end result just be much better and get rid of a lot of the orange peel that you may have started to see form. Now see that last coat we laid on, this is the Plasti Dip. As you can see, nice and thick. You just have to find the right balance of being thin enough not to drip, but thick enough to get a nice even coat. And don't worry too much if you get some orange peel. When they do dry, it flattens out just a little bit. All right, so now that these both have had a good amount of time to dry, let's take a look at the finishes. So you can see here that the Plasti Dip has a nice kind of matte finish. It's pretty smooth. And then you come over to the Auto Dip and obviously it's much more glossy. And hopefully you can see what I mean. The finish on the Auto Dip when I sprayed is a little bit orange peely. Most likely that came from me not doing thick enough coats early on. But like I've been saying this whole time, the nice thing is if you mess up, you can just peel it off and start again, which is probably what I'll do. Now, which one do I think is better? I don't really know that I have an opinion on which one I think is better because they both seem to work pretty well. I've had more experience with Plasti Dip. This is actually my first experience with Auto Dip myself. I Plasti Dip grills before on previous cars, and as long as you do it with good enough coats that are thick enough, it lasted on my car for over two and a half years without shipping or coming off. And I imagine the Auto Dip will do the same. Now if you are getting orange peel, don't get too frustrated. While I was at SEMA last year, I've seen whole cars that were painted in Auto Dip and I thought it was just a vinyl wrap. I really couldn't tell the difference. So you can get the finish to be pretty much perfect. Another difference between the two that is kind of interesting is what they look like when you peel them off. So let's do that. All you really gotta do is just find an edge somewhere, start peeling it up, and then from that point, it's pretty straightforward. See how easy this stuff comes off? If you do thinner coats, it does make it quite a bit more difficult to get off because it just doesn't all stay together. So make sure to do it nice and thick. <laughs> okay, so the time that it took me to peel this off was probably less than 30 seconds. But as you can see, this stuff kind of looks, well, it doesn't hold its shape at all when you peel it off. Now let's try the auto dip. Same thing, just find a nice edge to start peeling it up. Okay, so I probably should have let this dry just a little bit more. Because it's still not totally dry yet, it's not staying together the way that it usually does. But when you peel this stuff off, you can kind of see that it holds its shape a little more. Almost like you're peeling off, I don't know, like you're peeling off just sheets of vinyl. Which might kind of explain that when I saw those cars at SEMA, I thought that they were wrapped in vinyl. There we go, there's kind of a good example of what it looks like when you start to peel the auto dip off. Doesn't really mean anything, but interesting nonetheless. All right guys, well hopefully that gives you some insight on the uses of Plasti Dip and Auto Dip and what the differences are between them. If this is your first time heading over to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, welcome as always, and if you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. I will see you guys next time.